Years ago, when Amy and I started decluttering our home for the very first time, I remember having a thought, am I a minimalist yet? At what point in this process will I be able to assume the title of being a minimalist? I know quite a few people who identify themselves as minimalists that have a lot more stuff than we do. I also know quite a few people that are minimalists and they have significantly less physical things than we do. And so there seems to be a broad spectrum of what it means to be a minimalist. And that's a beautiful thing. But what it also means is there's no board certification of minimalism. There's no certificate you get. And throughout your decluttering process or your process of seeking to remove these distractions from your life, physical or otherwise, there's no point where you hit it where you officially qualify. And as you can imagine, that is both incredibly confusing and I would say very liberating as well. Now that I'm well into six years of practicing minimalism and exploring it, I found a definition and an idea that has really been the most helpful, not as something to be, but as a practice of removing distractions in your life, either physical distractions or digital distractions, that twitch you get when you check your smartphone, put it away, and then want to check it right away again. That's the twitch, and it's the twitch that often leads us to acquiring more and more stuff that we don't need because we have some discomfort that we're trying to fill or solve. And so we do that through checking our phones, through online purchases that might feel good in the moment, but they don't necessarily solve the underlying problem we're feeling. Because of that viewpoint that I hold, that minimalism is more of a habit or a practice of continually removing distractions, it means that you can't just declutter your house really quickly for a day or two or delete all the apps off of your phone instantly and just expect everything to always be better. It's an active practice that requires little bits of daily work and consistent work. So with that in mind, I have a few ideas for you that will be really helpful when it comes to keeping this practice in place, maintaining the progress that you've made by decluttering or changing some of your digital habits and really stepping into this idea of building a minimalism practice. The first idea is to use intentional friction to help you manage some of those distractions in your environment. Some things you can remove completely, but other things are more difficult to remove, and so they need to be managed. The example of this would be if you're trying to use fewer paper towels, you can put a rubber band around your paper towel roll. This introduces on purpose or intentional friction in the process of grabbing a paper towel. So if you wash your hands and you want to change your habit around how many paper towels you use, you would have to work harder to get a paper towel than you did before, thus giving you a moment to consider, step back, create a little bit of space in that process, and then make a more conscious choice. And this is the way that you can change your habits and live more intentionally, but by designing your environment in a way that will help you do it. Another example of this would be taking one of your favorite social media apps and moving it into a folder and burying it somewhere on your phone or not having your apps on the front screen of your phone at all. Adding a few extra steps that you need to get through to get to the app so that you can't just quickly twitch and open the app to begin with. It just gives you a little bit more time so that you can make a more conscious decision and even if you still want to open the app, that's perfectly fine. If you still need a paper towel, you can always just take the rubber band off and grab one. It's not about not doing these things. It's simply about building more awareness so that you're more aware of what you're doing and you own the attention that you are giving it. The second thing is reducing unintentional friction. Now, this is the exact opposite of introducing intentional friction. This is minimalism really as a constant practice. If you want to run more, you need to have your running shoes front and center and accessible for you to go so that there isn't friction between you, that decision, and putting on your shoes to go running. This applies all across the board. If there's a certain app you want to use that 
is really beneficial for you, you want to put that on the most accessible place so that every time you open your phone, that's the first thing you see. It's super powerful when we're constantly looking at our environment and finding ways to optimize it to make it so that we pay attention to the things that we know we really want to pay attention to. The third idea is to simply observe and acknowledge the twitch. When you start feeling that discomfort to buy something, even though you've just spent a bunch of time decluttering or clearing out your digital devices and you want to turn on notifications or reinstall an app, take a moment to just acknowledge the fact that you're feeling some form of discomfort. And even if you still go through and you still buy the thing or you still open the app or check social media when you didn't really want to, simply just be aware of it and acknowledge it. It's even more helpful if you say it out loud. You can say, I am really feeling the twitch to check my phone right now. That way you're creating a connection between what you're thinking, seeing, saying, and hearing. And then if you check it, that's fine, but at least you're owning your attention and you're making that choice. Minimalism is an incredibly powerful tool that we get to use to design a life that makes it easier to do the things that matter to us and harder to do the things that get in the way of those other things. But I think it's even more beneficial when we start to think about it as a habit or a minimalism practice rather than something that we have to become by hitting some certain milestone or a certain aesthetic that we have to make our homes look like in order to be a minimalist. There are a lot of ways to do it and there's no right or wrong way. And it's really about finding the way that works best for you. But when it comes down to it, I think everyone should be a minimalist if it just means removing distractions from our lives. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it?